Did you know you can self-host your own website analytics? You can, and there's actually quite a few options out there, but today we'll be taking a look at Umami and installing it with none other than Docker, our favorite containerization tool. Umami is a simple, easy to use, self-hosted web analytics solution. The goal is to provide you with a friendlier, privacy-focused alternative to Google Analytics and a free open source alternative to paid solutions. It collects only the metrics you care about and everything fits on a single page, giving you a simplified at a glance solution for your analytics. And as always, I'll have instructions on the homelab.wiki where you can follow along. And trust me, it's not that difficult. This is much easier to install and maintain than you would probably think. So with that being said, let's get started. I'm installing Umami on a fresh LXE container with Debian Turnkey Core on it. I'm gonna go ahead and log in and grab the IP address of this machine because I can never remember what it is. And I do have Portainer installed on this machine, so I'm just going to append the port 9000 and log in to Portainer and go ahead and... Oh, well, first I got to update my endpoint because I haven't done that yet here in Portainer. If you need to know how to install Portainer, I do have a video on that as well that you can check out on the channel. Now I'm going to show you guys how to cheat the system a little bit. I'm going to install File Browser through a stack. I'm going to go ahead and add it and paste it in here. This is also on the documentation. If you want to use this, you can. You don't have to. <laughs> what this will do is install file browser on the root of the system so you can browse all the files and edit files easier without using CLI. So for this video, I'll show you how to use file browser to edit your files and make things just a little easier for you if you don't know how to use CLI or if you're just getting into Docker in general. So let's go ahead and get this up and running. Okay, so we have a running file browser instance and this is why we added the endpoint earlier so we can click on these published ports. You'll log in with admin admin as the username and password. And this is file browser and you can see all of your files here in the root of the system. You can see the file browser files here. And what I want to do is go ahead and go into the settings, the global settings and change this to dark mode just so it's easier on our eyes moving forward. Now that file browser is installed, we have to create our first file. This is our file name right here that we have to copy right here on the homelab.wiki. So go ahead and click on the copy to clipboard button and then we'll go back over to file browser. Go ahead and go inside the Docker folder and create a new folder called Umami. This is where our files for our Docker container will survive. In here, we'll go ahead and create a new file and we're going to paste that name of the file that we grabbed off of the home lab wiki. Once the file's created, it will take you into the file automatically and there won't be anything in it. So we have to go back to the homelab.wiki documentation, scroll down a little bit and you can see this file here. We're going to copy this by clicking on the button to copy to our clipboard. We'll go back and we will paste it into this file and then click save in the upper right corner. Or you can press control S on your keyboard, which will also save the file. That's it with this file. We won't need to touch this or edit it in any other way. So let's go ahead and go back. This is the file we just created and edited. Now all that's left to do is create the Docker Compose stack or just copy it off the homelab.wiki. So let's go ahead and do that now. Something to me that it's obvious, but might be important for you guys to know, and you might wonder is why is there a Docker folder on your system? Well, when we installed File Browser earlier, we put it in Docker and then File Browser. That is why there is a Docker folder, and that's why moving forward, we're going to install Umami within Docker as well. Let's go ahead and scroll down and copy the Compose stack to our clipboard by clicking the little button here. We'll head over to Portainer and click on Stacks to add a new stack and paste that content into the web editor. Then we we will just go ahead and name it Umami. You don't want to change these volumes down here because we already created Docker and Umami folder. We already also created the schema Postgres SQL file as well. That's the file we just created using file browser. So make sure not to change this location unless you absolutely know what you're doing. So the next thing quickly I want to talk about is the hash salt. This is probably something you definitely want to change because hash salts are used to safeguard passwords and storage. What you want to do is go ahead and change this. And you can do that by going to random.org using their uh, string generator. And I just changed this to 20 and I tick on uppercase and lowercase letters as well. And then you click get string and then you can just pick one from the list here. Let's just grab this one here, copy it, go back to Portainer, and we'll paste it in here. Everything else you shouldn't need to change in this stack. So we should be good to go and click on deploy stack at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that now. 
I think now is a great time to mention that if you didn't create the SQL file that we created at the beginning, then this will not work because the Compose script will not know where to find that file. So it's very important that you create that file first before you run this Compose stack. According to Portainer, we have a healthy running Umami database and web front end. So let's go ahead and click on our published port here. And here it is. This is the first thing you'll see when you try to connect to Umami over the web UI. And the default username is going to be admin. And then Umami is the password. Immediately changing this to dark mode. So congratulations, you have successfully installed Umami and you are now on a journey to self-host your own website analytics. Now it's time to get things set up with Umami, try to figure out how to get tracking codes on your website, maybe even put this behind your reverse proxy so you can use it remotely and create share links and share your analytics with anyone you choose. Let's take a couple seconds to recap what we've done so far. First, we talked about where I was going to install Umami, and that is on Proxmox VE through an LXE container on Docker. Then we installed File Browser for easier browsing and file editing. Then using File Browser, we created our SQL file, and then we ran the Compose stack. But first, we changed out the hash using random.org. Moving right along, I wanna go ahead and set up Cloudflare and a reverse proxy for Umami. And doing that, I think I'm going to go ahead and start with Cloudflare, I'll create the C name, then I'll jump over to Nginx Proxy Manager and create the reverse proxy for it. So let's get started doing that. So this is pretty cool. I'm on the Cloudflare DNS uh, control panel here. You can see this at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new record. This is going to be a C name record actually, and it's going to point to my home IP where my server is located. I'm going to put umami.thehomelab.wiki. At least that's what this is reading this as. I'm going to untick the proxy status so that our reverse proxy can find it for the certificate and then click save. Now that I have Cloudflare set up, I need to tell my reverse proxy which IP and port it's going to be routing that traffic to. So this is it right here in my browser. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Let's hop over to Nginx Proxy Manager where we will add a new proxy host. Here I added the domain name already. This is the one we created on Cloudflare. Now I'll go ahead and paste in that IP and I will remove the HTTP and the port because the scheme is on this side over here on the left. Go ahead and remove this port because I'll be putting it where it says forward port here. Go ahead and tick on block common exploits. Now we gotta request our SSL certificate. So go ahead and click on request a new SSL certificate and force SSL. Wanna make sure we agree to let's encrypt terms of service and then all we have to do is click save and we are done. And now if we open a new tab and we go to umami.thehomelab.wiki, there it is right there. Now I previously set this up, which is why all this data is already propagated in here. So that's why you're seeing these charts now, but I'm gonna head back over to the fresh install where I'll show you how to add your website in, then grab the tracking code so you can start aggregating data. One awesome thing about Umami is the fact that it's super easy to do things. It's not bloated, it's not overcomplicated. Adding a website is simple as clicking on add website, put the name in, put the URL in. If you want to have share links, just tick enable share URL and then click on save and you're all set and ready to go. To get your tracking code, there is a button that says get tracking code. So we click that and we can see this JavaScript snippet here. It does say to place it in the head section of your website. Most websites in the back end do have a place to put code snippets like this for analytic tracking. So let's go ahead and take a look at the share links. This is the share link that we were talking about earlier. When we ticked that, you can see the public link that you can send to anyone. And when you send them this link, let's go ahead and take a look at this now. When I share the public Umami instance for the homelab.wiki, which is listed on the Umami documentation on the homelab.wiki demonstration, this is what you're going to see. No admin settings, no other settings, just analytics at a glance simplified. Doesn't get any easier than this. Back on the websites dashboard, let's take a look at the edit section. So if we click on edit, we can edit the name, the domain, and we can also disable the share URL if we decide we don't want to make a public instance of our Umami analytics. Also on the Umami websites dashboard, you'll see a reset button, which will reset all analytics that have been aggregated into this specific website. It'll basically start from zero again. It's like you just added it. Also, if you want to delete it, you can delete it here as well. The next and final part of the video I wanna show you guys is my favorite part of Umami, and that is the real-time analytics. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. You guys are gonna love this. This is actually quite awesome. On the left side, you see the Home Lab Wiki, which is the website that I'm tracking. On the right, you see the Umami dashboard in the real-time analytics. 
let's see what happens when I click on something here on the home lab wiki. I click on this, bam. Instantaneously you see what I'm looking at here. Let's click on something else, Docker Compose. Immediately you see the Docker Compose link that's aggregated through the analytics dashboard showing what I'm looking at. Let's go back to the home page. Here we are on the home page now. I'll do one more. Let's click on server builds here and you can see it took me over to server builds page and I can see exactly what's being aggregated here in real time analytics on this page. Pretty awesome. One thing before closing that I did want to mention is Umami does not log any sensitive data from visitors. So if you do come to the home lab wiki, it won't log your IP address or any other type of sensitive data. And to me, that's very important. And that's the way tracking will always be on my websites. This is very awesome. I love the tool. Tell me what you think of Umami. Will you be using Umami? Will you try it out and give it a shot on your own websites? Let me know in the comments below. If you found today's video helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and make sure to click the bell icon so you never miss a video that is released on the channel. And just a quick reminder that this is documented on the homelab.wiki. The link will be in the description below so you can get this up and running on your own website quickly and easily. And that's going to do it for today. Bye for now.